Well, joining us live now is member of the Ukrainian parliament, Ina Sovsun. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks. You tweeted this morning this uh, selfie you took uh, with your son when you were uh, taking him to school. He had to rush for cover in the metro. First off, tell us about your Monday morning. Well, not what I expected, that's for sure. Uh, we woke up, we were getting ready for school. When I read some of the news that uh, there were some explosions in Kyiv, uh, I didn't hear the first explosions myself. I live a bit further from the city center. Uh, but then uh, as we were getting ready, I realized that probably he's not going to school today, but we should be prepared to leave for the bomb shelter. And then I heard an explosion, which was a bit closer to my home. Uh, and then we just rushed to the metro station and we spent the next uh, three and a half hours over there with hundreds of uh, people who also came to the metro station there as well. What was the mood in that metro station? Oh, you know, everybody is asking that. Uh, were you scared? Were you afraid? Fear was definitely not the emotion I could see over there. I was actually talking to a pregnant woman. She was very pregnant. She was like eight months pregnant. Uh, and she was sitting there and I overheard her talking to what I figured was her mother-in-law. And she was very, very calmly saying, yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I'm sitting over here. I got my, my mat to sit. I have a nice spot. It's safe here. People are nice. Don't worry. We are fine. It will be over soon and then I will go back home. And and, that, and she's, she was very pregnant, eight months pregnant, and she was very calm. And so was everybody else. I think the general mood was fury. The general mood was determination, resilience. But fear was not something that I could even see even among a single person over there in the metro station. Practically speaking, how does it look for, for the next couple of days? Uh, it's back to the normal routine. The kids will go to school. Uh, no, the kids will uh, uh, theoretically study online uh, up uh, this week. Uh, we'll see how that goes, because the truth is we actually met my son's teacher in the in the underground station. So in case that the big explosions continue, of course, uh, that would not be possible. Uh, but uh, the plan for now is uh, to study online for the next couple of days and see what happens next. Uh, you heard uh, Dmitry Kalebo saying, uh, the, uh, for, the uh, foreign minister saying uh, to France 24 how this is the deliberate targeting of uh, energy infrastructure. Your thoughts on that? Uh, indeed, they were trying to hit them. Uh, the truth is, um, and that is undermining the, this idea of the big, strong Russian army, uh, Putin claims that they have hit with high-precision uh, missiles their energy infrastructure. But their high-precision missiles have mainly missed the energy infrastructure objects. So so they in, in some cases, they missed by, by several meters or by, by several, I don't know, 100 meters. Uh, but we still have electricity over here in Kyiv. Lviv has been hit uh, worse. Uh, the city doesn't have electricity for a couple of hours now. And, and, and I realize that this can continue. Uh, they will continue targeting our infrastructure, particularly energy infrastructure, as we get closer to the winter. And I do think this is the biggest um, you know, concern for us uh, and the biggest reason why we have to continue asking the world to help us uh, and supply the air defense systems so that to save our energy infrastructure. And we heard the German defense minister saying that a, a plan to help uh, Ukraine with its air defense systems is speeding up now and will be available in the next few days. Your reaction? Well, it would be nice to have it um, today available. And that is uh, for sure. You know, we've been asking for air defense system uh, to help us establish uh, our own uh, non-fly zone for, you know, since basically since the first weeks of, of the war. And uh, uh, some of it has been, uh, you know, produced and, and supplied to Ukraine, but unfortunately not enough, which allowed for, for many missiles to, to hit targets in, in cities all over the country today. Uh, but yeah, we need more. We are appreciative uh, to the Germans for supplying the Iris team uh, system, uh, but we're going to need more. You see that they will continue doing that um, until they run out of, of missiles, basically. Uh, the uh, winter is coming. Uh, what do you see happening next? Well, uh, in terms of uh, civilian lives, uh, of course, the biggest danger is, is Russians' attacks on energy infrastructure. 
Uh, people were advised to switch off the lights and all elect electrical devices uh, for the evening today. I'm looking out into the window and, and the majority of, of uh, houses are just dark. People are not switching on their lights uh, to, to save electricity. So that is the biggest concern in terms of, of civilian life. In terms of, um, of uh, the battlefront, um, that is a bit different there, of course, because we do understand there will be some slowing down of things as, as the winter comes. So most likely the, the front line where we would be by, let's say, mid-November will be the one where we will basically stop up until the, the, the springtime, unless uh, some, some, something unexpected happens. So I think that is why Ukrainian army is now really pushing really hard to, in her zone and in Kharkiv region and in Donbass uh, to, to, to liberate as many cities and towns and villages as possible, uh, to save as many people as possible. You heard uh, Ukraine's foreign minister saying that uh, uh, the Belarus president's announcement of a joint force is a, quote, worrying development. Are you worried? Well, I am worried because uh, the Belarusian border is uh, like two hours drive from my home, of course. Um, but the truth also is that Belarusians themselves, even those in the army, have no hatred towards Ukrainians. They, uh, they don't want to fight Ukrainian army. They don't want to, to intervene in this war. And I think that is the reason why uh, Lukashenko has been, uh, uh, you know, delaying this decision to intervene for so long, because he understands that he will have, uh, uh, you know, even his own army would be against that. So let's see how that works. Uh, but I do think that Lukashenko will try to delay this decision as much as possible. Ukrainian Member of Parliament Ina Sovsun, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with us here on France 24. Thank you for having me.